Saudi sweep at least 11 princes, including prominent billionaire investor Prince Awali bin Talal, are now under arrest in Saudi Arabia. The arrests were carried out by the powerful new anti-corruption committee headed by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the future king. Uh, Prince Al-Walid is one of the world's richest men, we know. He has investments in companies including Twitter, Citigroup, and 21st Century Fox, the parent company of Fox Business Network. In the wake of Prince Al-Walid's arrest, Kingdom Holdings is assuring shareholders this morning that the kingdom... Uh, has confidence in the company, writing in part this, I am not surprised by the government's vote of confidence uh, as KHC, that's Kingdom Holding Company, pursues its investment strategy in global business operations. I would also like to emphasize that KHC's experience and seasoned team of senior executives who are leaders in their respective fields are focused on their unwavering responsibilities to KHC shareholders and stakeholders. Obviously, they are trying to calm investors across the world down. Uh, after seeing the chairman of uh, KHC, Prince Al-Walid, get arrested. Joining us now, Fox News senior judicial analyst Andrew Napolitano. Judge, this move was shocking. It's not illegal under Saudi law, though, right? Well, no, it's not illegal. But <clears throat> remember, Saudi law is, is not law like we have here. It's not based on first principles. It's based on whatever the person in power wants. It's a, it's a, it's a kingdom. It's a one-man rule. It's a, it's a, it's a tyrannical form uh, of government. <clears throat> we have many financial relationships with them and many amicable relationships with them, but they do not share uh, the rule of law that we do, which has basic principles of due process. So if the prince in charge decides you're going to be arrested, you're going to be arrested. Now, what's going to happen to him, the billionaire investor whom I have met, whom many of us have met from the time that he was on the board uh, of News Corp, uh, is anybody's guess. Yeah. But don't expect a fair jury trial like we get here. We were, we were able to go to the Pr Prince Al-Walid's resort while I was in Saudi Arabia two weeks ago, and I was able to speak with the crown prince, the future king, uh, about his vision. And, you know, I think one thing that's interesting here is that the crown prince, 32 years old, young guy trying to change the mentality of Saudi Arabia, he sees the U.S. as an incredible ally because they see a common enemy in Iran. Well, some of the uh, people he arrested are people of privilege who complained about his liberalization. You know, it was a big deal a couple of weeks ago when the Saudis announced that, announced that I'm pointing at you for a reason, <laughs> women can drive cars. I mean, over here, it's, it, we, we laugh at it, but it's a major step there. Right. There was a lot of pushback to that, pushback against him, pushback by some of the people that were arrested. All right, a lot of people feel that he's moving too fast. Yes. And then, so yeah. I asked him about that when I interviewed the future king. Here's what Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman told me. Saudi Arabia has, was not like this uh, prior to 79. Saudi Arabia and in the entire region, uh, you have the awakening project spread after 79 for many reasons. Today is not the right uh, day to discuss them. We were not like this in the past. Uh, we uh, only want to go back to what we were, the moderate uh, uh, Islam that is open to the world, open to all the religions. That's what he's referring to, the Khomeini rule in 1979. That, he says, look, we want to live normal lives, the way we were living lives before 1979. That is a very profound statement. And even though I saw much of your interview, I didn't see that part, but, but that is uh, absolutely profound. Look, we don't know where this is going to go. The president of the United States hasn't weighed in on it yet. We have a tremendous... He has. Yeah, he weighed in. He said that he agrees with the Crown Prince's modernization this weekend, he said. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'm not surprised that he said that, and I'm glad that he said it. Uh, I'd like to see some due process for these people, but I don't, I don't expect it. Yeah, Judge, you, know, you, you talk about this uh, crown prince looking to liberalize and, and, and move more towards this, uh, you know, Western ways in some ways, allowing women to drive, uh, cracking down on corruption. But now we have these prominent people under arrest. And, you know, if, if, if a man like Prince uh, Al-Walid is treated poorly and, you know, God, you know, God forbid, you know, something bad happens, we've seen this helicopter crash, which looks very suspicious, yes. of some very prominent folks, including the son of the former crown prince, Mukreen. Uh, how important is it for MBS to manage this properly? Well, do you use tyrannical means to lessen tyranny? Mm. And that's what we may very well be confronted, to, confronted with here. The, the future king, on his own, there's no grand jury, there's no investigation, there's no evidence. I want these ten people gone because it will make the country more moderate and uh, more liberal and more western. Uh, and I'm going to use these means uh, to accomplish it. it it's got to play out. It's and, only three and days in the making. They're saying that, you know, any, any gain or investment that was deemed to have been ill-gotten, 
because of corruption or money laundering, that will be seized mm -hmm. by government. So you just don't know what that includes. Well, you don't, you don't, know, you don't exactly know where that's going to go. Exactly. It could be anything. It's a many billions, or if you're talking just a, a, a token amount.